Uh, can we welcome to the stage uh, a good friend of mine? Uh, you're going to absolutely love him. Give it up for Stormy Pasha! <laughs> So yeah, that was my little interpretive dance. I wanted to dance longer, but my vicious co-star said show didn't have dancing elements in it, so we would defraud people. Um, and, at the and, at, and at the dress rehearsals, I practiced my breath, but now I'm out of my breath for some reason. <laughs> so a little bit about myself. I'm 41, uh, I'm Stormy Pasha, I'm Gay Aquarius from Ukraine. Uh, obviously, super stylish. <laughs> very confident demeanor. Um, very, very, guys. It's gonna get better from here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I work in finance. I have pretty secure job in finance. Some of my brave colleagues there in the audience <laughs> will learn a lot about me tonight. <laughs> So, but I was bored over COVID and I decided to become an executive coach. So I now have an executive coaching diploma. You're so welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so there is only one professional on the stage, actually, from the coaching perspective. <laughs> and you know, since I was a little, I wanted to be someone bigger, you know, and really change the world and make an impact. And I remember there was one very important turning point in my life when I was eight or nine and my parents had a party at home and, you know, least like, least likable friends of theirs came to my room to chit chat about school and everything. And after tolerating them for about three minutes, I kind of stopped them and said, are you giving me free advice just because you're trying to deflect from your own misery? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they tried to respond something and then I said, no, thank you, you can go. <laughs> they left offended but I felt super proud to have defended my personal boundaries, right? <laughs> because boundaries matter, guys. But as I grew older, I realized that very rigid or strict boundaries make people sad, absent, isolated, and dangerous. And when I say sad, isolated, dangerous, of course, I mean introverts. And just like that, guys, I realized my true purpose and calling. I became an introvert conversion coach. <laughs> and how it usually works, I would be out and about in public places, and I will scan the landscape for an introvert in need. I will find one and will say, hey, introvert, what's up? <laughs> They will freak out and try to run away, but you see these long limbs, I run after them quicker. <laughs> and I usually hit them with either my enormous charisma or very profound line, something like, I see you. <laughs> I know what you need and I can give it to you. <laughs> and so I do, right? And converting them, it's kind of tiring. So I found the more scalable solution is leadership course called Unleash Your Inner Extrovert. And current you know, modules of this course are um, ankle tags for introverts just to track how active or passive they are. And if we need to make them move more, we can send a little bit of electricity into their body. Um, another thing is we're matching them with an extrovert mentor for a week with no downtime, no reading, no me time, absolutely. Um, Arranged marriages are also on the table, and you know, it might sound, you know, torturous or illegal, but let's remember from Netflix um, series, it's all the sad, absent, isolated, and dangerous introverts plotting mass murders and all other civil unrest at home. So I'm only keeping the crime levels down, really, here. <laughs> Um, and, and in fact, there are actually some of the familiar faces of uh, converted introverts here. And you guys would think that I made them book tickets for the show tonight. <laughs> but I actually didn't. They came with a free will because they went on my course. 
and they unleash their owner extroverts, inner extroverts, and they're now out and about on Wednesday night. <laughs> like, let's just give away a round of applause for all the converted introverts in here. <laughs> but you know, as I convert more and more introverts, you know, my friends started asking me like, how can you be so selfless? You know, because similarly to Anthony and Rebecca, I am desperately single. <laughs> and yet to establish very meaningful connection with a man. Um, and you know, being single and being born in the 80s and being single in London feels like very much object on a British antique road show tele. Like almost your granny's porcelain plate <laughs> that somebody will desperately want to buy. Um, so the sense of urgency is there, right? And, um, you know, I, I tried so many things, you know, therapy, talking to friends, positive psychology. I even tried hypnosis to the man I was dating. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't really work. So, you know, I decided to embrace innovative approach and asking ChatGPT, what shall I do, right? So I basically asked ChatGPT a simple question. Hi, I'm 41, I'm single, I'm looking for a deep meaningful connection with a man, what shall I do? And ChatGPT behaved just GP, uh, just as a British general practitioner said, like, you need to reflect, right? Like, Kept in hindsight, it's similar like GP gives you the advice to take paracetamol that will heal you from all the problems, right? But you know, I was like, okay, I really need to embrace this. Time is now, tick tock, tick tock, as my mom says, my expiry date is approaching. So <laughs> sense of urgency is kind of there. And so the chat GPT said that I need to reflect on what hasn't worked in the past and what you're looking for. And honestly, what I'm looking for is quite obvious. For instance, gentlemen here, <laughs> the second from the left in the front row, pleasant smile, no, no apparent anger management issues. <laughs> gentlemen, the third from the right there with the curly hair. So like my standards are kind of decent. You need to have a smile and you don't need to be a really angry man. Uh, but what actually, but what actually, uh, you know, the most interesting is actually a bit of what hasn't worked in the past, right? And it for, for sure, if I will make a commercial breakthrough in comedy, I, my show will be called something like My Dating Diaries or The Resilience I Never Knew I Had. <laughs> so you have been absolute darlings. I will give you a couple of sneak peeks of how car crushing my dates were, right? Mm -hmm. So the first one will go, uh, the man who I call overheated oven. Who, who always would text me at 9.30 in the morning with the list of things he would like me to do to him in the evening. And at that point in time, I can't be at the work meeting trying to figure out whether I'm dead inside or not and what's the purpose of the work meeting. So yeah, it should be time and space for all this stuff, so definitely no. There was a lawyer in training, beautiful man, super good connection, you know, good laughs, but very strange living condition, a living situation. He lived with six people, and on my morning walk of shame, I met all of his six <laughs> flatmates <laughs> taking the stairs down. Privacy matters, guys, Pr privacy matters. Um, and uh, the third category is probably, you know, this man on the ups who never, who always answer your questions, but they never ask you anything, qu anything back. And you know, like, do I look like BBC reporter? Is it an interview? No, it's not. No, it's not. But you know, I recently developed the morning affirmation just to keep me on track with all this life. And, I, and it goes as good is coming. It has to. Like, there is no way. Like the good is absolutely coming. And what really anchored my sense of hope for the future is actually I read that my favorite singer Cher, who is 78, dating somebody very good looking who is 38. So, you know, I'm 41, you know, the right chances. Let's just all guess what my future love of my life can be doing now. Maybe making first steps, learning how, how, how to ride bicycle, 
how to express himself, you know, I'm, I'm ready to wait for him to come out of age. There is nothing illegal, but I'm better than Cher and I can make it. Um, but you know, whilst I'm, waiting, uh, whilst I'm waiting for him, and if you like my wife and you're in the audience, why don't you come to me after the show and use this very secret passcode to ask me out. You will look into my eyes and you will say, I see you. <laughs> I know what you need, and I can give it to you. You have been absolute darlings. Thank you so very much. It's time to share your priceless advice. I'm terrible at reading people's handwriting, so should I quit my job to go traveling? Um, I'm asking this question myself almost second uh, every day myself. <laughs> it, it's a joke, people from the sixth row. Um, um, but I would say that why don't you just become a nomad? And just you know, do what you have to do, just in different places, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, and just be better v version of yourself. Not very funny though. Boo. <laughs> uh, let me try the second one. I hope it's gonna get better. Um, what is the best day to to load the dishwasher? <laughs> I mean, actually, funny answer, I'm Ukrainian, and I was terrified to use dishwasher for years. <laughs> Even in living in places with dishwasher, I don't know why we as a nation are unable to fight this vicious machine, so... Uh, but I would say, why don't you do it on Monday night, guys? Thank you so much, and... Uh, And you're up for the tree, the lady who will look after you and will find each, find out all the facts about you. It's a wonderful one and only Rebecca Murray. Woo! 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 Woo!